right, so now we're gonna talk about feeding. So it's really important in the springtime to feed your bees because there's maybe not a lot of stuff that is blooming during the early spring. And so giving your bees uh, some alternative food is really helpful. Again, one of our goals as beekeepers, besides a dry home and parasite management, is giving them food. So if we give them food when not a lot is readily available, then they'll build out the wax in their frames a lot better and a lot quicker, and they'll start filling it up a lot quicker. So there's essentially two options for feeding your bees. There's an in-frame feeder, which is the one on your left. And we have one here. Uh, this one's black and it has, this is all hollow inside and it has two holes here with little sort of ladders that the bees can walk down, access that sugar syrup that you're gonna put in here and then walk back out and disperse it around their hive as they would like. Wanna pass that around? Um, the great option about this is you can feed when it's cold. It holds a lot of volume. It does cause a little bit of drowning, but that's going to happen. Uh, but they're a little bit harder to change. Uh, the other option is a top feeder. And I haven't worked with a top feeder before. I found that these in-frame feeders work really well. But this is another great option uh, because it's a lot easier to fill. So there's a couple of different options here. You might think about how you want to work with your bees. It's really important to feed in the spring, again, because it helps them build out their wax. And so in order to do that, you wanna put sugar syrup in there. Uh, and sugar syrup is really simple. It's sugar and water. So you can take a gallon of really steaming hot water and put five to seven pounds of, of sugar in it or so. And then in the fall time, you're gonna feed them a thicker syrup that's maybe more like 10 to 12 pounds of sugar per gallon of water. So that helps them build out that wax in their frames. Very important. Next, we're just gonna briefly touch on this. This is a, a photo and a slide that's not gonna be in your, your portfolios there, but I felt it was really important to add because managing Varroa mites right now is very important to keeping our hives going year to year. This is a graph that I stole, gracefully stole from the Treasure Valley Beekeepers Club website. Um, and it shows the different treatments and when you might use them. We don't have time to get in the, into that today very specifically, uh, but I do really wanna point out there, there are a lot of different options for treating your hives for mites. I encourage all of you to do some research on what might be best for you. There's natural options and there's synthetic options. There's options that are shown to work a little bit better than others, so I encourage all of you to do a little bit of research. So if you've done any research on beekeeping, you've hopefully come across the big threat that Varroa mites bring to our hives. Uh, they cause a lot of problems. They bring different viruses and diseases into our hives. They just weaken the hives overall, disable their ability to develop proper wing structures, and they also make it harder for our hives to do what they need to do and build out their frames to forage for honey. It just makes all of their daily processes a lot more difficult. So if you want your hives to get through to next year, it's very important to treat for them. So the benefits to controlling Varroa exponentially outweigh the uh, harm that it causes to the bees. So I encourage all of you to do a little more research on these products and what you might do to control the Varroa that are in all of our hives. So now you've got your nuke or your package installed in your box. Things are going well. They seem to be taking to their new home well. And you're really excited because you want to check out your bees and see how they're doing but you're not really sure what to look for. So we're gonna talk a little bit about that. So you wanna learn how to inspect your hive. And one of the things you really wanna look for is how is your queen doing? Is she laying eggs? Is there brood growing in your hive? Is the population getting bigger? So those are the things you're looking for. So hopefully in an ideal, beautiful dream world, all of the frames in your brood boxes will look like this one on the left. It's nice and full. The pattern's really thick. It takes up a lot of the frame. It's beautiful. And also, you'll notice that there's a layer of honey and pollen that's on the outside. We get, you can see these little bullets here. Those are our, our drones that are, that are there. That is a beautiful pattern. On the contrary, we have this weak 
not doing so well frame. This tells me that my queen is not doing her job and she needs to go and we'll replace her with another one. Again, it's not personal. She, you're just not doing your job. It's corporate America. We're here to get things done. She needs to go. So replace her with a new one. So again, you want to see the picture on the left. Now you may not see that every single frame in your hive is full like that. That's okay. You'll probably notice that most of the frames more in the middle are what are going to be filled out and the ones on the edge are a little more empty or maybe those are starting to get full of honey. But you want a good chunk of your frames in the middle to look solid on both sides like that picture there. You also want to look for food stores and pollen and honey. Are they starting to produce a lot of honey? And again, how's the queen looking? You don't necessarily need to see the queen to know that she's doing her job. If you see a pattern like the one on the left, you know that she's doing well. If you see eggs, you know she's been there in the last three days. So you don't need to necessarily keep rummaging through your hive and looking for her and risking the chance of hurting her. So now you might be wondering, okay, my hive's getting really full. It's getting really hot outside because it's summertime. So how do I manage that time of year? So you've gotten your package or your nuke installed, your hive's growing, you're learning how to inspect it. And now summer comes along and you're wondering, what to do with all this heat. So it's really important to know that just like any other animal, bees need water and they need a resource that's relatively close to their hive. So you want to have a source nearby, whether it's a natural one like a, a stream or a river or a pond or something, or maybe it's your neighbor's pool or hot tub, which is not so ideal. So you want to make sure to put a water source near your hive. I wouldn't recommend putting it right next to your hive, but roughly within 20 or so feet is a good place to have a water source. So at Boise State, I do not have water sources right near my hive because I'm on a rooftop. So what we do is we take those bases to pots, uh, the little pot holders, and then we fill it with a few rocks and put water in it so that the bees have a little place to walk. They can access the water, but they won't drown in it. So that's what we put at our location because we don't have um, water nearby. The Boise River is close but not quite close enough. You'll also notice that as it gets hot outside and your population starts to grow, you'll notice uh, an act here called bearding. So it's where the bees start to build up on the exterior of your hive. That can mean a couple of things. That can mean that it's really hot and you might need to give your bees some more ventilation. So a way of doing that is a vented bottom board or maybe you prop the lid on your hive a little bit or maybe you take out the inner cover or do something that just gets the air flowing from bottom to top. It also might mean that your population's getting pretty large and in that case you might want to be looking for some swarm cells. We looked at those at the beginning looking for some swarm cells to ensure that your hive is not going to swarm. So if you notice that about seven out of the ten frames in your hive are full of brood that's a good time to put on another brood box. Eventually they'll fill that out as they definitely have in this picture. And after they fill out about seven to 10 of those frames, that's a good time to put a queen excluder on if you wanna use one and then put a honey super on. So that's the general rule of thumb I use in the beekeeping world. There are no rules, but that's the guideline that I work with is if 70% of my frames are full, I add another box. And again, if you get to the point that you don't see your hive growing, you want to make sure that you're requeening. So a lot of you are probably wondering, well, how often should I access my hive and check it out? There is really no solid answer to that question, and you'll read different things in different places. But here's one thing I can tell you, that you won't learn how to work with your bees and how to inspect your hive unless you work with your bees and inspect your hive. So get out there and check it out. That's the only way to practice. That doesn't mean you need to open your hive every single day, but if you wanna go out there a couple times a week and check on things, do it, because that helps you practice managing, working with your smoker, lighting your smoker, moving frames, all of that practice is helpful. But it is important to know that your bees don't need you to check on them all the time. Uh, some beekeepers may just check on their hive every couple weeks, depending on the time of year. Um, in the winter, we don't check on them really at all when it's really cold outside. But if you want practice checking out your hive, do it. All right, so you've got your package, your nuke installed, your hive's growing, it's summertime. 
they're booming. There's lots of brood. So you added a, a queen excluder and you added a honey super on top and boom, you've got some honey. That's a good sign. You've won the game of beekeeping. You have some honey. So you're probably wondering, well, what do I do with it? How do I harvest it? What's next? Uh, a, good, a good rule of thumb to know that your honey is ready to harvest is it has this nice thin layer of wax, that white wax over the top. That tells you that the bees have determined this cell here is full of honey. I'm gonna cap it over because it's full. And so that tells you it's ready to go. What you wanna do is make sure to catch your frames before they get so full of honey. We call that honey bound where there's no room. And then when you go to pull out a frame, it, it breaks that seal and then you got honey going everywhere and you're just swimming in a really sticky but sweet mess. So you wanna avoid getting to that point. But this is a really great frame to extract from. Some folks like to extract when their box is pretty full of honey and then they'll just put it right back on top. Others will just add another honey super and then wait till it fills up more and extract in, in one big session.